tranquility by Leah Viamontes. It's hard to imagine a river so calm as it flows and moves right along with a bottle of water right in my hand and a cool summer breeze whipping through my hair. I admire the river for its mesmerizing view and the trees surrounding me giving off a cool vibe too. The gorgeous blue tone of the Blackstone River reminding me of why I arrived today. My family and I look out to the open and rejoice in the beautiful view of the open river before us. If I were to paint a portrait of this delicate day, I'd include the feeling of tranquility that I felt whilst taking in the sight that stood right before my glistening eyes. Nemaco, Minotas, Matutquas. I am many trees, Edward Jackson. Water ties us back to the Creator, Minotu, and Mother Earth, Father Sky, and all living two legged things. All living things. Our Blackstone River, the Nipmuc River, is the people's river. My freshwater people. My brothers and sisters surrounding us, the Narragansetts, the Wampanoags, Niantics, Pequots, Poconocus, all work together with the Nipmucks. We are one people, the original nation of Turtle Island. We stand alongside many First Nations along the waterways that we have traveled for generations. Today, Kit Tuck meaning Great Tidal River, is sick. Our fish cannot move freely upstream to their beginning and downstream to their future. With the addition of the colonists building dams, our livelihood changed. Industry dumping toxic to the river through mills, dyes, and chemicals. We are the water protectors. She is a part of us and we are part of her. When the water is sick, so are we. Our ancestors have said, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. We need to come together. We are the water protectors of Blackstone River and all Eastern Woodland Rivers. Aquini Aho. Hi, I'm Zachary from Pawtucket, and this is River Island Park. Its 2.5 acres contains many fun activities to do. One of which is its large field, an eighth of a mile track, great for any sport activity. Other fun activities include the Children's Book Spot, a great place for youth to get free books. Hi, my name is Vinicio and I'm from Central Falls. One thing I love about River Island Park is how much pride people take in the park. And they do this by cleaning up after themselves. And any trash and recycling they find ends up in bins like this provided around the park. Hey, I'm Aaliyah, I'm from Patooka, Rhode Island, and I have a question for you. Are you looking for a place where you can both enjoy the nature of Rhode Island and take in the view of the beautiful Blackstone River? Well, come visit River Island Park and Campground. The park includes a bridge that crosses over to the mesmerizing River Island and includes beautiful scenery and relaxing recreation. Not to mention, Rhode Island's only urban campground is located on the island and is available for reservation. Oftentimes, young people who live in the city do not visit green spaces because they aren't familiar with those spaces. Not having transportation, 
or they have the impression that accessing green spaces is not part of their culture. This is an environmental issue because when younger generations do not have the opportunity to visit waterways, green spaces, and see wildlife, they don't have a chance to connect to the land and other living species. Their sources of water and how all these elements are all interconnected. Not having a connection to land, water, and non-human sentient beings is not only isolating to youth, it isolates them from the reasons why we should take care of Mother Earth. Slater Mill was built by English industrial Samuel Slater in Pawtucket, Rhode Island along the Blackstone River in 1793. It was the first successful factory in American history and the first of countless cotton mills that would come to dominate Rhode Island. These mills spun raw cotton into thread using a variety of water-powered machines. It's too cold to grow cotton in New England, so all this cotton was being imported from slave plantations in the South. Rhode Island's mills then were part of the demand side of the system of slavery, buying up the cotton that was picked and processed by enslaved people, and so encouraging the spread of slavery deeper south and further west, right up into the Civil War. Enslaved people did not labor in the mills themselves, though. Rhode Island had a significant population of free and enslaved people of color, but capitalists established northern mill work as white labor, and people of color were systematically barred from employment. The mills employed exclusively young white workers, aged roughly 7 to 13, who made some 40 to 60 cents per week, working between 12 and 16 hours per day. Both boys and girls were employed, though even at this stage, boys were paid higher wages than girls. But child workers protested from the beginning. They ran away in large numbers and parents regularly pulled their children out of the mills. Even before the first mills were running, people were protesting. When Slater was constructing the first mill dam in the early 1790s, Pawtucket residents attacked and dismantled the dam in the middle of the night to protest the changes to the Blackstone River, as well as to the coming industrial order the dam represented. By the 1820s, Pawtucket had undergone a burst of industrialization and now had eight textile mills, six machinery manufacturers, and a population of around 3,000. By this time, the mills had more complex weaving machines and had brought in young women, aged 15 to 30 year olds, to work them, as they were too complex for children. Young women quickly became those prominent workers in the mills. Mill owners continued to exploit these young women as if they were young children, though. In May of 1824, mill owners across Pawtucket met collectively and decided to cut the wages of these women workers by one-fourth and to extend the workday to all employees. They thought these young women would simply accept these cuts, but they were wrong. 102 women workers in multiple factories immediately walked off the job in protest and resolved not to return to work unless their old wages were restored. They quickly enlisted the support of other workers, as well as Pawtucket community members still upset with the power the mills had taken. This was the first factory strike in American history and the first strike of any kind in America led by women. After a week, the strike ended with a compromise. We don't know the details, but we know the workers at least won a partial restoration of their wages, a huge victory at this early point in industrialization. Here are some ways that we as a community can help protect the Blackstone River. Conserve the water you use at home, like turning off the water while brushing your teeth. Installing rain barrels is an easy way to collect water when it rains, before it becomes polluted stormwater runoff that hurts our local rivers. Water retained in a rain barrel can be used to water grass or flowers, helping residents lessen their impact on the environment and save money on their water bill. Support tree planting and green space projects. Green spaces help reduce the risk of flooding by absorbing rainfall where it lands and cools down our cities. Don't litter or dump anything into sewer drains. Remember that when it rains, water from parking lots, streets, and highways flows into the rivers and ultimately ends up in the Narragansett Bay, carrying with it animal waste, oil, grease, fertilizer, and garbage. Organize a river cleanup with your school or community group. And last but not least, visit the river and enjoy it. <laughs>